Um, and we're here to just bring some more real exposure to the real estate market and talk to you guys about any questions, queries, or posers. I watched Short Circuit this weekend with my kids, so that's what's stuck in my head. You're welcome for that, Darcy. Johnny Five. <laughs> Johnny Five Alive. Um, anyway, but uh, we're, we're here to bring another great episode and uh, just help inform you guys, answer, like I said, any questions. If you have any questions throughout the show, we're, we're adding a new layer this week. What is that, or this month? What is that layer, Darcy? We are opening up the phones. Whoop, whoop. So if you want your answers question, Wait, <laughs> not right away. Let's try that again. If you want your questions answered live, right here, right now, give us a call on 206-557-9103. One more time. 206-557-9103. Awesome. Awesome. So um, jumping into today, we are going to talk about a very hot topic out there in the wide world of mortgage and real estate. And that hot topic is rates, rate and the rates. Yeah. What are rates doing these days? Um, anybody want to take a quick guess? They're going up. Rates, my friends, are going up. Uh, so we're, we're continuing the conversation going into 2022 that was started and kind of put on hold there during the Christmas holiday. It was quietly just kind of hanging out, hanging out, yeah. right? We were just in this we're not going to do much in the in the mortgage backed security market and in the in the federal eyes they were like well inflation's coming so we're going to have to adjust some rates and it really went quiet i think the only things that were happening during that period mm -hmm. was uh, santa was busy santa San and yep. santa and was busy omicron yep exactly they were getting after it um so then i think the markets decided to go out on a bender because from December 31st to today, the 11th of January, 2022, um, rates have just deteriorated. They have gone up, up, up every single day, except today. 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 So they're slowing down. They're tapering a little bit. But we really, for the last week and a half, have just been walking down the, the hillside um, and it's it's borderline, uh, it's, it's borderline cliffside. But anyway, what is driving all this? What is driving all this? Consumer price index, inflation fears, and the big thing that I want to talk about here in Rate the Rates today is short-term interest rates, right? So prime interest rate is something in the crosshairs of the Federal Reserve, and those crosshairs are saying, hey, we're going to have to raise these short-term interest rates to slow down the economy and to get the inflation issues in check. And now... When we look at the Federal Reserve, the Federal Reserve has 12 members and most of them vote, not all of them. I want to say, if I remember right, eight of them vote. Yeah, I was thinking it was eight. And um, what they're debating right now is, should rates go up two times this year or should rates go up three times this year? So what they're really referring to is the short-term interest rates. Everybody wants to calculate that and say, oh, it's it's mortgages. Mortgages are part of it, but they're not the exact... Um, interest rate for interest rate increase, right? They, right? Don't, they don't mirror each other perfectly. They're not exactly proportionate. That's what I was trying to find. That was the word I was looking for. They're not proportionate. So as they go up, they will um, require uh, your attention in the mortgage world because the mortgage world will kind of keep moving up with the short-term interest rate market. My big shout out for everybody out there that has two particular things maybe in their wallet or tied to their house if you have short-term credit and i refer to credit cards as short-term credit credit lines through your bank as short-term credit those are going to be directly impacted by the prime rate right so they're all derivatives of the prime rate so um if you got that home equity line of credit out there for a hundred thousand dollars because you put in a banging new kitchen awesome good job i love that you're using your equity to build your uh, house out the way that you want it just know that when they say hey come this march that we're going to take the interest rates from three and a quarter up to three and a half you're going to see an immediate april adjustment to your mortgage payment on that home equity line of credit same thing with your credit cards, guys. Credit cards are tied to the prime rate. So um, it is 
It's a great time. Rates are going up, but it's a great time to debt consolidate. Get rid of those high interest credit cards because with rates being right now, Freddie Mac is our is my go-to resource. So Freddie Mac says rates today are 3.22% with a 0.7 discount point, which means you're going to whatever your loan amount is, you're going to pay 0.7% in an origination charge, a discount point to get that rate, right? So the the cool thing about that is that's still considerably less than a credit card. It's still considerably less more than likely than your home equity line of credit. So it's a great time, though rates are going up, it's a great time to look at refinancing and getting that cash out because everybody's sitting on a ton of equity right now. Don't be, don't, don't be locked down by all that high interest debt. Go get it paid off. There's no shame in it. So um, that is Rate the Rates Today, 2000, 2022, the first January, 2022. That's the first go at it. And um, since it is January and since it is the beginning of the year, I think we should put our predictions out there, Darcy. I think they'll continue up and I think they're going to level off somewhere about 4.125. I was thinking a little bit higher. Oh, really? Yeah, I was thinking wow. 4.25. Okay, so Just mark our words. We're going to have to go back and check this show next year at, in our first January show of 2023 and say, hey, were our predictions right? I'm thinking 4.125. You're thinking a little bit higher. Um, so long story short, we're at 3.22. We do have about, I believe, a point to to the upside before we level out in this market. So there you have yeah. it. Boom. Rate the rates. Love it. It's um, It's still a crazy market, though. Still a crazy market. How crazy is it out there? This week, it's insane. Actually, right before the show, mm-hmm. I was uh, writing an offer. Okay. And I talked to the listing agent. She already had four offers in hand. She was expecting at least eight more. Whoa. Um, it was <laughs> priced at, um, I'm going to go with about $875. i am just giving okay. estimates. I think it's going to go for well over $1.1. 1. 1. Um, what? Yeah. Hi. Wow. So it's, it's still just crazy out there. There's so limited inventory right mm-hmm. now. Uh, and it's scaring people. It's, it's scaring, scaring people. people. So we're going to talk about, maybe this is you out there being scared. We're going to talk about, yeah, wow, the market is tough right now, but it's not insurmountable. Right? right? So many people are walking around out there and have, in my opinion, have self-eliminated themselves from getting into a new house, getting that move-up house because it's too hard to sell their house and buy it the next one. So we want to specifically carve out some time in today's show to talk about that. Yeah, let's talk about the, it's too expensive. I can't get into this market. Great. I, Jump into it. I agree. <laughs> it is expensive. But that doesn't mean it can't be. It can't be done. You just have to be smart about how you do it. And time and time again, and I'm not like a touchy-feely person, but time and time again, I see things happen for a reason. Mm-hmm. Point in case, I had somebody yesterday put an offer in for them. They didn't even see the house come up. They didn't even see it on the market until yesterday morning. They called up, I want to see this house. We got them into the house. We scheduled it, I think, at uh, about 4 o'clock they were supposed to go see. And Mm -hmm. the agent called and said, hey, I've got so many offers in hand. We are going to review offers early. So we went to it a little bit earlier. What? They can do that? (laughs) Yeah. They wow. can do that. It stinks. But they can do it. They weren't supposed to look at offers till tomorrow. Um, but whatever. These things happen. Wow. So we got there, looked at it. They loved it. Simple. They loved it. So I called the agent and said, all right, how many offers you got? What are we working with? Now, some agents tell you more than others, right? She didn't really tell me much. She said how many offers they have in hand. She said it's above asking and it's about this percentage above asking, right? Mm. All right. Um, I didn't really think we had much of a shot, but my client really wanted it and they were willing to do what they, we thought it would take to get there. They got it accepted out of like eight offers. And, um, it was awesome. And, and the reason why I didn't think they were going to get it accepted, honestly, 
was because they were an FHA loan with three and a half percent down. They were not competing at the level that a lot of people mm. are competing at right gotcha. now. But you never know what the seller's looking for. And um, they feel very blessed today to to be writing the earnest money check on their new house. Nice. Score. So, so just to just to kind of pull these apart, this is different than the eight hundred thousand dollar house. Yeah, we're talking this about. is different. So, so this is different. Yep. Wow. So yeah. eight hundred thousand dollar house with multiple offers, eight ten offers, and then this that one house. was in Seattle, and this one that I'm talking about is actually in Spanaway. Okay. Um, similar eight offers ish eight offers although the the house today the one in seattle is actually they're expecting 12 offers they oh, had wow. four in hand they were expecting another eight um that one was listed for 475 the one in spanaway um and we're above five but not crazy lazy sunday just popped into my head okay get a dozen donuts oh, yeah oh. okay yeah dozen <laughs> offers per house people dozen, dozen offers, dozen offers per house right now. Um, I have another one in Bothell. I put an offer in on Sunday. Mm -hmm. We tried to be a bully offer. Do you know what a bully offer is? No. What is a bully okay, offer? So a bully offer is when the agent says, hey, we want all offers by this date. In this case, they said Thursday at 12 o'clock. All okay. offers do. And on Sunday, we said, great, but we want it now. We're going to put in an amazing offer. Oh, We're going to like hundred thousand over asking, releasing tons of earnest money, waving every like. Wow. Okay. It, and it was a crazy awesome offer. Seller can do what they want. Yep. The seller looked at the offer because the agent always has to present the offer. That's the rule. Okay. And the agent presented it and the seller said, nope, I want to wait until Thursday. Wow. Okay. Okay. My client said, all right, well, I'm going to take this time to do an inspection. So we did a pre-inspection before submitting in the offer on Thursday just so they knew what they were getting into. Yeah, we're not putting an offer on that house anymore. Oh, wow. So you're retracting completely. Well, the offer has already expired, so we don't right. have to do anything. But oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So, um, but we are not going to make another offer on that house. There were too many major things. Whoa. So, so this is the risk that people are taking right now. You don't yeah. always have to take that risk. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, but there's so many different avenues. And again, things happen for a reason. If they were meant to be in that house, they would be getting that house. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> they were not meant to be in that house. We are not offering again on it. So I, I wanted to go back to. It's tough, but yeah, right? it, it's tough. But so it's tough, but there's exceptions. Yeah, there are times when it's supposed to happen. It does. Yeah. Um, I think the big thing with this market is being clear on what your goals are, and I'm not just talking monetary goals. I'm talking about I want my family to be living in this, or I want an investment of this. Yeah, right. With that. We can work around the parameters to find what works for you in most cases. Mm -hmm. Now, if you come to me telling me you want a massive deal, <laughs> like I want the deal of the century. Right. I'm going to say, yeah, now's not your time because there are not crazy deals out there. People are just excited when they actually get a house that they can afford. <laughs> yeah, right. So, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a seller's market. Well, and, and let's, this is what, for all you buyers out there listening, watching the show, um, however you're consuming our content here today, I, I want to give you salvation in this. Every single client that Darcy and I have worked with in 2021 that came to us and said, hey, I'm ready to buy a house. I'm going to go through the process. Yeah. They all got into a house. Yes. Right? The journey may have been different. Some of Very. them may have been able to put down a lot of money and release earnest money up front, and they only made one, two offers. Yeah. Right? Then there's cases where we had folks that that were pushing budget. They were they didn't have a huge down payment, but they had the tenacity. They had the gumption to stick in this market and six, seven, eight offers deep. They finally find mutual acceptance. You know, they I finally get that contract. It's, it's so fun when that happens. Um, <laughs> it, it's. It's funny because sometimes I, a lot of times I have clients that are like, oh, geez, Darcy, I'm taking up so much of your time. We did two yeah. offers. Like, should we just give up? Yeah. 
no, this is my job. Two offers, that's nothing. Let's keep doing this. And I'm, if you want to pull out, like, great. But, but you know, it, we get there. And every single offer is a learning experience. It's just a type of market now that it takes a little bit of time. It takes um, some, some chutzpah. Yeah. It takes um, getting used to different terminology and talking to me a lot, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but that's okay. We can get you in a house. I'm not worried about that. It's just finding the right place for you. Yeah, definitely. And you know, that same, that, that same chutzpah and and gumption, it's, it's really a life characteristic, right? This, I think, I think this market is creating people that have a little more understanding of everything. Um, you know, similar to, Similar to everything when, when we shut down the first time in COVID and we all ran out of toilet paper, right? There's very Speak little, yourself, in, there's very little <laughs> inventory, right? But if you just wait for it, it's going to happen for you. I promise you. Yeah. Um, it, you it, have to be patient. I, I, I just reminisced about that today and, and on the way over here to the studio, I'm just like, man, every single client, every single one of them that went through the process, starting with pre-approval starting with Darcy to say, hey, this is what we're looking for. Yep. And and said, I want to buy a house. That intention, folks, is what's going to make you a winning buyer in today's market. And for all of you that want to sell and then buy, the second that you say, I can sell and still buy a house and set that intention, that will serve you so well going forward into 2022. Yes. Because Darcy, is there going to be this huge flood of inventory in 22? No, I mean, it's going to go up from where it is right now because, because <laughs> we're, we're at like there. no inventory right now. Who am I kidding? Um, no, actually, I, I do have a client that they found three houses to look at this week, and that was it. Um, wow. But three is three's good uh, compared I, to I, some. I, well, I, it, um, it's funny. I was like, is, is this a good, good thing or is that right. a bad thing? <laughs> um, we actually got that client into a house in Seattle earlier this week with a yeah. bully offer. Yeah. yeah bully offer, sure. <laughs> um, so everybody else only has two houses to look at now. Um, so, you know, there's nothing on the market right now. There's very, yeah. very little. That being said, more and more houses are going to be coming on the market. I was just looking mm-hmm. at my list of upcoming listings that I can expect. I can't divulge anything. What? Wait. Because in our state, we're not allowed to tell you. Is there a super secret special list that the real estate community No, has? no. My list. My oh, your my, list. My listings. Oh. Like my oh, upcoming your, list. Okay. Gotcha. I was like, Yeah. We're not allowed to do off. Well, we can do off market, but we can't, we can't do coming soon. Like you see in some states, mm-hmm. that's against our rules here. And that's so why you never see it. Idaho, they do that. Yeah, they do it in most of the country. Soon. What is this? Yeah, they do it in most of the country. Um, but I was looking at my list and I... As of right now, I potentially have about 12 listings coming up in the next three, four months. That's great. Which is awesome. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. <laughs> that was perfectly t- well done. <laughs> we'll see. Um, we'll see if they all come through. Because mm-hmm. a lot of times people get down that path and then right. have some anxieties. Um yeah, so we'll see. So so let's take this as a coaching moment because I think this could be really, really beneficial for a lot of those folks. Of those 12 people, yeah. those 12 listings that are coming down the pipe, how many of them are like, okay, I got to sell and I'm going to go buy? And and what's the coaching moment there for you, Darcy, and, and helping that client understand that it's not the end of the world to sell high and buy high? Yeah, so some of them, well, yeah, it's a washout. So right. So you're... you're if you're buying high and selling high, it's a wash. If you're buying low, selling low, it's a wash. Like, it's a wash. Right. Yeah. You know? um, there's a few rental properties. Okay. But they're looking to do 1031 exchanges into, like, gotcha. a vacation home that they can rent out, Airbnb, like, stuff like that. There's a few, um, uh, they think they're they're going to get transferred to another part of the country. They're very excited gotcha. to buy for what they thought was going to be less in that part of the country, but probably not. It's probably going to be about the same. Um, so we'll see if those come through. Uh, and th- there's a variety of different things, but I want to say all of them mm-hmm. are also going to purchase. Maybe not locally. Mm-hmm. There's a few of them that are going out of the area, but all of them are going to purchase. Okay. I'm going to throw you a softball. 
were any of them saying this, Darcy, I got to sell right now because we're at the height of the market and the market is going to crash. So I have to pull my, my positions out now. No. Okay. Nobody said that. Um, but <laughs> I, I, I asked that because I, I, I too have seen in the last six months, a, a big shift. There, there was a lot of yeah. folks sitting on the sidelines saying, this is going to implode. We're not going to continue this. And now in the last two months, people are like, I'm just going to have to do what the market's doing right now. Yeah. So I, I, that is very, very true. Some of them, they never say it on the selling side. On the buy okay. side, they'll be like, am I buying at the top of the market? Is this going to go to hell? Um, <laughs> they say that a lot, but nobody ever says it on the sell side of, I better get my money out now. Okay. Um, and that's largely, I think, because they're they're doing both. Um, but the market is what the market is. Mm -hmm. And actually what I was thinking about in my way over here was uh, a client of mine was telling me about a property that her parents passed up on buying. Oh boy. In an amazing, amazing <laughs> part of Seattle. Don't do it people. In, well, this is like <laughs> back in the late eighties. Oh wow. There was a property for $45,000 that they were like, that's crazy. We're not buying that. That's insane. Yeah, we'd be selling it for like 1.4 right now. Yeah. So, um, and I think back to just five years ago, we looked at a property ourselves that was in the, the five range. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the conversations we actually had was my husband saying, God, this is ridiculously high. Are we going to go that high? Yeah. Again, we could be selling that house right now for one point. Something. Yeah. <laughs> so so the prices seem high to us right now because of what we've been conditioned with. But it's where it's going. One day, it's going to seem cheap. Mm -hmm. And with the lower rates, even though they're going up, with the lower rates on top of that, it gives you some some wiggle room. Yeah. And I always advise people, if, if you want to see the trajectory of Seattle specifically, Go look at San Francisco. San Francisco is our case study. It's so identical. It, it, it's it's so similar. Yeah. And um, it's quite striking how similar the two markets are in their trajectories. Um, so we've got lots to the upside in that respect. So I, it's it's not going anywhere anytime soon. And um, if, if you're looking at also the commercial development and the cores of both Bellevue and Seattle, yeah. the infrastructure is here to just exponentially blow up so now's a great time still get in hey make it happen i have a question for you okay what's the question so i just gave that example of um of somebody passing up on something back in the like late 80s, 80s. like 89 yeah 80? so what what were rates back in 89 oh man i don't I could see if I could pull up the spreadsheet. Actually, you know what? Funny enough, I think I actually know off the top of my head because that's about right. when my dad bought and it, it was around 18, 19%, I want to say. Yeah, I was going to say it was pretty expensive. It, it would make rates today look like pocket change. And, and so, yeah. you, you know, I, I'm glad you asked that question because I'm a big enough geek, a big enough nerd that I actually have the Freddie Mac rate survey up here. <laughs> and um, that it was goes not back, planned people. It goes back to 1973, if I remember right. So in the 90s, it looks like we were well in the eights. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, it's good. Th this is a great transition. It, we could take this moment. You want to say 97 or 98? I want to see see where it back to eighteen <laughs> percent. Okay, so well, there's in eighty seven. In eighty seven, this this week in nineteen eighty seven, um, was nine point three seven. Right, but pretty soon before that, it was in the elevens. Yeah, and um, so the the eighties. Well, the savings and loan debacle of of the early 80s i want to say 82 83 yeah. that shot things through the roof like 18 20 percent but i'm glad you asked this question because let's dive deep into rates if we could change i'd love question. to it, jay do we have any questions about the market you know it's too tough but i just let, let's put a pin in it really quick 
the market is tough. And I'm going to say what I said earlier. The market is tough, but it's not insurmountable. Absolutely. If you want into this market and you want to go buy a house, you can turn off all the static of all the naysayers and, and your mom and dad and grandpa Joe and, and just go buy that house. Because number one, I always get back to this. We all need a place to live. Rent's not going to get cheaper either, folks. So, no. so that's really your opportunity cost if you're in a rental right now. Now, if you're, if you're buying that house and you're outgrowing it and you've been there, sell high, buy high, right? Wash. It's a wash, right? So um, intention is the key to your success going forward into 2022. Man, I think we'll get a bumper sticker made of that. I think there, there probably already is one. <laughs> Dang. Um, so I, I wanted to jump quicker in or jump deeper into rates for a minute. Yeah. Because ha- r- rates seem like this magical unicorn that just, you know, grazes across the prairies and, and people are like, oh, look, there's my magical unicorn rate going over the hill or what have you. Um, so I don't know about you. Over this past week, since the new year, the 10 year challenge has like lit up. Oh my gosh. Yes. All my socials. And it's like hashtag 10 year challenge, hashtag 10 year challenge. And, and hashtag like 10 year challenge, hashtag 10 year real estate challenge. I saw one yesterday that was their house oh, 10 years ago yeah. versus their house nowadays. It was much improved. Oh, nice. It oh, improved. it was much improved. <laughs> so, so they um, made it happen, huh? They did. They did a great job. Okay. So are we doing a 10 year challenge? challenge for rates? Yeah, we're going to do a rate 10-year challenge. So I, I want to open it up for all you out there watching or listening. Um, where do you... So we, we said today, the, the Freddie Mac rate survey that was published on Thursday, that rates were at 3.22%, right? Um, I'm going to throw this up here on the screen. Let's see if this works out. 2022 equals 3.22%. Um, with like 0.7% in discount, right? So 0.7%. So that being said, where do you guys think rates were in 2012, 10 years ago? 2012. Were they in the threes? Were they in the fours? Or were they in the fives? I'm thinking they were in the high fours. High fours? High fours. You're wrong. They were not in the high fours. This same week that Freddie Mac surveyed mortgage lenders coast to coast. Now, keep in mind, let, let, me set the, let me set the ground rules here. This is a house, right? Single family residence with 80% loan to value, 20% down payment, 741 credit score, owner Look, occupied. That is important. When we, when we say this is what the rates are right now, yeah. that's always Got to talk the about given. That. 20% to talk down. About over 741 credit score, single yep. family home that they're going to be living in. Okay, so three, oh, I'm still on the eraser. So three point, I have my notes right here. Three point. Ooh, I can cheat. Nine, one. <gasps> with a 0.8 cost. So to get that rate, you had to pay 0.8 of a percent of the loan amount. Right, so they're not terribly far off they're not terribly far off, and they're exactly where I think rates are going to go t- by the end yeah. of this year. By quite frankly, by the middle of this year. Um, little known secret: they typically crank up rates. At least this has been my visions of the trending. They crank up rates just in time for March, and then they let the selling season happen at the highest rates of the year, and then they drop them back down oh, in, sh- in in summer. Shocker. But anyway, shocker. Um, it just seems to correlate that way. And between 2012 and 2022, we yeah. have seen rates go up into the fives for a short period of time. Very short period of time. It was just a little bit of time there. Um, but I was like, okay, this was fun looking at 22 to 21, or excuse me, 22 to 12. And I was like, I wonder what rates were in 2002 on the mortgage side. And um, you want to take a wild guess in 2002? So my guess on that is that's the sevens. Let me. Okay. So. so I think it's a seven. Uh, to be fair, it was six, seven, or eight. Which one do you think oh, it was? Even better. Yeah. Seven. It's okay. So you're going you're gonna to stay with it. You're right. Yeah. It was in the sevens. So 
seven point what? I don't know. You don't know? I, I mean, I got the seven. Right? I didn't know Jeez. either. I had to look up the mortgage <laughs> survey. Three. Um, survey one, says. Four. 7.14 with a 0.8 cost on this. So these are all 30 years, right? I'll put 30 year up here. Um, that's not really good to know. Um, so these, these are the 30 year rates when we compare the same Freddie Mac mortgage survey of mortgage lenders coast to coast. 2022, we're at 3.2%, 3.22% with a small cost. 2012, we're at 3.91 with a small cost. 2002, we're at 7.14. That's crazy. I, I Doubled today's market. Doubt it's going to get there anytime soon. Doubt, yeah, I would. I would <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, yeah, everybody's like, well, what if rates do jump up to 7%? I'm like, you've got bigger problems than your mortgage. Seriously, yeah. right. So um, I wanted to share that because it's a very good illustration of where we've been, where we're going. Yeah. And um, quite frankly... For all you buyers out there, an increasing rate environment after being historically low for the past two years, we had a little jump up when COVID spiked, but having the, the rate environment go up a little bit, it will hopefully slow the buyers down. Yeah. And in that case, in slowing the buy, uh, buyers down, it's also going to slow the amount of offers per house and hopefully hopefully find balance. Oh, we could do a whole Star Wars thing on this. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, when I said find the balance, like good versus evil, baby, the, the light versus the dark. Um, I'll bring the lightsaber for that one. But yeah. Um, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm stuck on that. So I, I'm, I'm super excited for rates to go up. Yeah. I'm, I'm probably one of the few mortgage people in the industry that would say that publicly, but I am excited for rates to go up. Um, we need to find balance in the market. And I think the, the number that I saw kicking around either through the Seattle King County Realtors or the um, Northwest Multiple was there's like 13 to 14 buyers per house in 2021. On average, yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd say that's a pretty good guess. So if we could knock that down to two or three, be, it, it would be really be beneficial awesome. for all parties involved except the seller that won't get – 30% over but the asking But you know what? <laughs> yes, it is not great for the seller as far as asking price. But if yeah. they're buying again, then it's wash, whatever. Um, there's another component in here, though. Lawsuits. Whoa. I know. I went there. You're dropping the L word. The legal word. <laughs> Lawsuits. Lawsuits. Who's getting sued right now? Um, who's not getting sued? Uh, actually, Sellers are to a certain extent. Okay. And agents are to a certain extent. Oh, interesting. Who? Uh, okay. Wait. Okay. So think on this. Okay. Okay. Buyers get so wrapped up in the, we need to get a house and right. in the game and the hunt and the wave this, wave that. The adrenaline rush. Yeah. Right. But they're doing some stupid things occasionally. Not always, but occasionally they are. Okay. So like, yay, I bought that house. It's mine. They move into it. And they start having that gut punch of, what did I just do? Uh-oh. Right? They might qualify for it just fine and everything, but they they didn't realize how much stuff that the house needed. Mm-hmm. How much needed to be done. Right, and and right. there's a specific. Because they waived a pr inspection? They, well, sometimes it's a waived inspection. Okay. Sometimes they didn't know what they were looking at in the inspection and they didn't ask enough questions. Oh, gotcha. Some people think that an inspection is like a pass fail. Like the inspector is going to say, this house failed. Don't mm. buy it. That's not how it works. What they do is they say, these are the things that I found wrong with it. You make the decision of whether this is stuff you can live with or not. Right. Um. So. But beyond that, there is a form. We refer to it as Form 17. It is the seller's disclosures form. Oh. So a seller would have to disclose, like, pertinent information about the house? Yeah. So the in Washington State, the seller's disclosure form is a set form. It's six pages long. Oh. I know. It's kind of crazy. Uh, four and a half of those pages are 
line by line questions. Okay. Do you have the legal right to sell the house? Oh. Yes. Well. No. I don't know. Let's hope you're not putting that one. <laughs> <laughs> and not applicable. <laughs> Clearly not that one either. I don't know if I can sell this house, can I? <laughs> um, there is four and a half pages of nonstop questions. Well, well, how deep does it go? I mean, what if, what if something crazy happened at the house? Right. So, so you're supposed to answer the questions as honestly as possible. Okay. Not hide anything because if you're hiding stuff, that's an easy way to get sued. Oh, so that's how the buyers are coming back to the <laughs> sellers. Right. So oh, sellers good. are oftentimes just thinking. Don't know, don't know. Like, let's save myself oh. some liability or no, no. Okay. So so the non-answer <laughs> is, is yeah. in the seller's eyes of protection? Think about this. You, um, you have something that happened with the house. Let's say you had mold up in the attic. Mm -hmm. You have mold in the attic. And you talk to your neighbors because you have people coming to give quotes, doing this and that. And you decide, you know, what? I'm not going to hire those people. That's crazy expensive. I'm going to do the work myself. Oh, boy. And you do the work yourself. And then on a question, you check off that you haven't done any home improvements or you don't know if any home improvements were done to it. Okay. Now, in your mind, you might think like, yeah, it's taken care of. I took care of it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't professionally mediated. Right. And your neighbors all know about it. So now, oh, somebody else moves into the house. Okay. And they're like, hi, I'm the new neighbor. And the neighbor says, oh my gosh, we're thrilled to have you here. I can't believe how high this place went, especially after all that mold that made that family sick. Excuse, excuse me, what? <laughs> right? <laughs> and then there's a, a lawsuit. Um, wow. so, so you really, really need to be careful as a seller. Right. Just because it's a seller's market doesn't mean the seller can do whatever they want. The seller still has to follow all the laws, be honest, be true, mm -hmm. um, do the right thing. And oh, that's a great life lesson. Yes, Just do is. the right thing. Just do the right thing. So I, I actually tell all my clients when they buy a house, keep a home diary. Oh, that has all the things that you've done to the house. Keep the receipts. It makes it makes oh. life easier to show the appraiser like, hey, we did all of these upgrades. It's worth a premium. But it also helps your memory when you are filling out that that seller's disclosures form. That's a good point. I never thought of doing. Do you write, dear diary, <laughs> or or you know, there's a few different ways to do it. A lot of people have binders, and they have different sections. And um, I actually have something oh, that I'm going to be um, putting on my YouTube channel in the next week or two that goes through exactly what that looks like, what I recommend. Oh, that's um, sweet. But there's also many different online avenues that you can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, the things that I like to include on it are not always obvious. Okay. There's, of course, any repairs you make, any warranties that you have for work that's been done. So you can see if you can transfer those warranties to the next owner because mm. that helps out. Um, any instruction manuals for appliances and stuff like that. What about the uh, keypad on your door for the numbers? Oh, yeah. The garage door keypad? Yeah. Oh. When you want to change that code, wouldn't it be nice if you knew exactly where that book was and the master code? So the master easily, code. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so put stuff like that. Paint colors. Oh. Put a paint chip or write down the, the color. Put things like that in there. That'll help you massively um, when you have to do touch-ups and, wow. and things like that or pass along to the next person. So doing a home diary is just an easy way to keep up on your home, to be able to right. show you've done the maintenance and, and show that the house has been cared for. But it's going to save you. When you fill out that form, because if you can honestly right. fill it out and if you get sued, you can be like, well, I took my home diary. Look how thorough I wrote things. Uh -huh. And I transposed it into answering all the questions. 
the judge is going to be like, yeah, this looks accurate. Yeah. Isn't it interesting that it seems to me that whoever has the most documentation so going true. into a court battle wins? <laughs> it does seem that way oftentimes. But that this is – it's a really good – and there's other reasons for it too. Well, that, no. I mean just the paint chips. I mean <laughs> – I know, right? So often you, you open the can of paint and something gets – a little sticker on the top of the paint can gets rubbed off or what have you or painted over. And then you're like, what color was it? Right. And oh, then you have to match it's it. Beautiful. It's beautiful. It's horrible. You could get one of those little accordion folders. It's got the little pockets in it too. <laughs> I see a lot of binders with um, folders in it that you can slip things yeah. into it. Um, and, and that online, uh, there's home diaries. That's oh, home diary.com. I want awesome. To say. I, I'm actually going to uh, dive into that avenue. Cause, um, yeah. Now with two houses, the more houses you have, I bet the... I think you have three. More, oh, gosh. You're right. I do have three. <laughs> you forgot. You just I bought forgot. one. <laughs> um, rental property. Rental properties. Anyway, um, can we go crazy? Yeah. What's up? It, sa- it sounds like a pretty basic form, right? The house, the house did this. It's got water, blah, blah, blah. What if something crazy... What if the house is haunted? It's got ghosts or Ooh. something something unmentionable happens in the house and, and now you're going to go sell it. I mean. Yeah. So actually, that's a great question. I get asked all the time, like, well, they'll tell us if somebody died in the house, right? Right. In this state, this is a state-specific ruling. A state-specific state ruling. State-specific ruling. Okay. In Washington state. Right. We happen to believe, as a state, <laughs> that um, <laughs> that if somebody dies in a house, it is an emotional effect and not a economical effect of that house. Okay. So the seller does not have to disclose if somebody died in the house. Wow. Right. Regardless of how somebody died in the house? Yeah, it doesn't matter. So, so somebody ninety year old could pass away of natural causes. Oh, grandpa! And no nope. disclosure. You don't have to say anything. Um, there, there could be a murder in the house. Told, that was where I was going. Yep. No, wow. you don't have to say anything. It can be a horrible crime. You know now, what else is a crime? Is this was our MythBusters, and we're not wearing <gasps> our goggles. Crime. I just noticed them. I'm gonna I'm try not, to put I'm them not. on. The jingle's coming, guys. Jingle oh, the jingle's coming. coming. Yes. It's, it's, it's being made questions. right now. That will oh, help. That nice. will help in the future. But it, it's important to know that they do not have to disclose it. Now, each agent has their own personal belief on this, right? My personal belief, mm-hmm. what I mentor people to say and what I tell my clients to do, mm-hmm. if you know of something that happened in the house. Yeah. Um. An example is somebody that I mentored had a, a house that he listed that there was a um, murder-suicide in the wow. house right before he listed it. Wow. And we had to clean up and stuff beforehand. Not good. Um, well, it was a hot market, and he got four offers. Mm. The people that inherited the house did not need to disclose anything. Okay. Right. They actually didn't even need to fill out the seller's the disclosures 17, because right. because they were um, inheriting. We'll circle back yeah, to that. Yeah, circle back to that. So yeah. another situation all completely. But they did not have to disclose that there was a bad crime there and somebody passed away. Now, what I advise people to do is oftentimes I we just know people that don't feel comfortable living in a house that something like that's happened. Right. So look at the offers. Go back to the one that you want to accept and say, hey, listen, you're the winning offer. However, before we sign and get into contract, I I want to tell you the history of this house because I don't want you to find out when you move in. Yeah. And I want to make sure you're okay with it. And if you don't want to buy the house. That would be awkward at the first like housewarming party, Ooh. barbecue, backyard. Oh, hey, welcome neighbors. Unfortunately, it happens. Um, so so if if we if the seller tells or the, the seller's agent tells the buyer's agent before it's all signed around, we can be like, yep, okay, we know that and we want mm-hmm. to move forward. Um, 
during the one that I'm thinking about, one of the people actually said, huh, okay, I'm not sure I want to move forward. I, I think it's not for us. And they backed out, mm. which is, we weren't fully in contract yet. That's fine. Uh, somebody else said, yeah, I got no problem with that. Right. <laughs> they jumped right in. Yeah. But different people have different beliefs. Right. So it's, it's something you do need to be cognizant of in the event that that is something that bothers you people, in a Washington people, people. state. Yeah. That, that's that's kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, let, let's circle back really quick because we, we mentioned something there that is important. Uh, I mean, people do pass away and they inherit houses every, every day. Yeah. Right? Um, you said that the Form 17 in, in this case wasn't even required. Yeah. So there's, in general, the Form 17, which is that seller's disclosure form, is required in every single transaction. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can waive parts of it. You can't even waive the whole thing, right? Gotcha. The parts that you can waive are the non-environmental parts. So there's a section that says like, um, was it, are there wetlands on the property? Um, was dirt, fill dirt ever used on this property? Mm. Things like that, that area, the buyer cannot waive receiving. The seller has to fill out, including if it's like a home builder, if it's a, hmm. um, a bank that owns the property, has to be filled out. Okay. You probably get, I don't know, a lot. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, but, know. I don't know. But, um, but they have to fill that out. However, there are a few circumstances that that form in its entirety is excused. It does not need to be filled out. It's exempt. And the major time that we see this is for um, times that somebody, not the person inherits, but the times that the estate is selling the house. Right. It's when the estate sells the house. If a person inherits the estate and then that person goes to sell it, it's in their name, so they have to fill it out. Gotcha. Now, all the time I get asked, like, hey, if it's foreclosure, if it's bank owned or something like that, I don't have anything. Don't they not have to fill it out? No, they have to fill it out. Yeah. It's it's horribly filled out, but, <laughs> but they don't know, don't know, don't know, don't know. They don't, don't know. and they don't know. Yeah. They they legit don't. Um, but that's the most con common circumstance that the seller's disclosures does not need to be completed. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Um I wanted to ask Jay a quick question. The what was the the call in ID on Darcy's phone was going to be what? Darcy's phone number? Yeah. But if it rang to Darcy, I think we may have had somebody call. No, in. we didn't. Oh, we didn't. I oh. knew what that was. I didn't answer oh, it for a reason. Well, I was hoping that was a call. Yeah, Darcy Darn. was supposed to give me a cue when someone was calling in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. I mean, I can try to call in. No, I think we're good. Do you want to ask? Yeah, us yeah a you question? got a question. <laughs> <laughs> what question can we answer for Actually, you? Actually, I have, I have, I have two questions. Sure, oh. go for it. You don't need to call us though. Just, just yeah, talk yeah. to us. I know. I, I have the God's voice. So yes, you do. <laughs> yes, so you. I took a buyer out this past weekend mm -hmm. in Redmond, one and a half million dollar price range. I kid you not, there was a dozen people waiting. Oh man. Like 90 minutes straight. Like it was like a running ongoing wow. line. Was there a bouncer and it, you the, paid the, cover the, or what? Actually, actually, actually there was no cover, but definitely a bouncer. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like how, how much of a rate movement would there have to be for that to actually some deter normalize. somebody yeah and i want to mention wow. quickly that jay our amazing jay right here is also a licensed real estate agent so he's not just like picking up people on the side of the street and bringing them to see houses it's <laughs> oh legit, that, no, okay? that's good backstory no. good backstory uh, I, I i i do now for sure yeah well why is your video <laughs> producer taking people out um so um you can do it too jay that's a great question and um we're going to post on the, the Facebook page um, to this, um, I created an, il an illustration of just, hey, if I took the con the conventional loan limit at uh, $647,200 and I matched today's rates of 3.22% uh, to 2012's rates of 3.91 mm -hmm. to <laughs> just go look at it. It's amazing when you look at 2002's rate it's like um, at seven point one four. What it would do to them? The payment, the payment went up by like a thousand bucks, right? So, 
to, to answer your question, Jay, it's hard to answer that question. We find ourselves in the Pacific Northwest in a very blessed situation. There are lots and lots of high paying jobs. And for all of you out there in the Puget Sound, you know, the, there's a lot of money. There's a lot of wealth out there. Um, and, and that's a pretty amazing thing. We're very blessed here, not just in the Pacific Northwest, but on the West Coast, um, to have such a, an amazing opportunity to earn income. I will say this, income does drive the real estate market. It's proportionate, right? If, if you can't hit the debt to income ratio of the underwriting guidelines, the market won't go that high because people could no longer qualify and afford the mortgages. Right. So higher incomes, higher, higher prices. home prices, right? So um, I wrote it down here. The rates today, if we took that $647,000 mortgage, the rates today at 3.22, the principal and interest payment would be 2806 on that loan, right? So then you have to add in your taxes and you have to add in your homeowner's insurance. Since it's 20% down, there's no private mortgage insurance. In comparison to rates in 2012, the rate at 3.91, it increased the mortgage payment from 2806 up to $3,056. So what did it do? It added 250 bucks to the mortgage payment, right? So could we see a 0.7% increase in interest rates and really not slow the market down all that much? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, especially around here when we talk about the the dual income potential when we you know when you look at an application and you have two tech people in in the world of of Google, Amazon and Microsoft both earning somewhere in the in the ballpark of on the low end, a hundred on the high end, four hundred thousand dollars a year each. That's a very powerful household as far as being able to qualify for a mortgage. Good purchase power. So huge purchase power. Um, so I, I don't really think we're going to see a lot of impact in rates until we get above the four and a quarter to four and a half. And I'll say it won't be because of the inability to qualify for a loan from a debt to income standpoint. I think it's going to be more of a psychological shock yeah. in the consumer public's eye that, oh my gosh, rates are now, oh, rates are now, <laughs> break, four, your other yeah, break my other finger. Rates are now at four and a half. I, I, I don't know if buying a house is the right thing well, for me. I think it's a combination of that and the psychological piece of their budget. So, so this is what happens when people come to me. Some people say, I'm looking to buy a house. Mm -hmm. My budget's about, 600,000, whatever. My budget's 1.5. Other people, and a lot, come to me and say, hey, I'm looking to buy a house. My budget is $4,200 a month. Right. And with, with that change of so much a month, it, that's where the psychological part is. Now, if they are, if they're saying my budget is $4,200 a month, great. They might have the ability to go up to 7000 a month. I don't know. But they don't want to do that. So if it's over their amount, how much do they want the house? How much are they willing to go for it? That's what, that's what really makes a difference at this point and how the rate changes things. And, and it's common that we get it quoted out and then they don't buy for a while. Um, and as we're putting in an offer... I always talk to, to Keith before I put an offer because I, I want a pre-approval at that dollar amount. And um, one of the things he always says is, oh, the rates have changed. Why don't I give them a quick call and make sure they're still comfortable with this yeah. amount? That is super important, especially right now. Um, the, the last week and a half has just been, wow, um, rates changing deep every day. Mm -hmm. So um, what was here, um, what's not going to work for you in the immediate market is, uh, you know, hanging on and not being flexible, right? If, if you're hanging on to a preconceived notion, flexibility, intention number one, but flexibility number two. Yeah. Because. Uh, and listen we, to your support team. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're here for a reason. The, the, the flexibility in increasing that purchase price, the flexibility of changing the terms of your offer 
you know, maybe we will pre-inspect as opposed to having an inspection. It, it's not just money driven is what I'm trying to say here. So true. And oftentimes you know. people hold things back from mm -hmm. us thinking like, oh, well, they're going to, they make more money if, if we buy more. Do you know what I tell people on that? My go-to is this. I'm like your defense attorney. We're going to the jury. That's a great one. You better tell me everything and all, and, and most importantly, ask all your questions. I, um, I'm working, so I'm working with this client today. Um, great guy. He's, he's taking the path and, and this is one of our, we're, we're going to wrap up the show here and tell you how it's going to work going forward, which is super exciting. But, um, he is looking to do a renovation loan and he's asking a lot of questions Good. and he goes, I feel like I'm in elementary school and I'm wasting your time. I right? think that but all that, the time. No, like, that's no, our job. Please ask your questions because it, I will tell you right now, if you're working with a mortgage or real estate professional that does not want to hear your question, fire them. Don't work with them. Yesterday. <laughs> um, f quickly, you guys, you, you're signing a check for millions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars. If you're not educated about it, you're doing yourself a disservice. So please ask all those questions. I tell my totally. clients there are stupid questions and I still want you to ask them if you have it. <laughs> That's cool. Like I don't, I don't care if you think it's a stupid question. <laughs> I yes, don't care if yes. I think it's a stupid question. Clearly, you have the question. Therefore, it needs to be answered. Therefore, so. it needs to be answered. You know, I mean, yeah. just just think think about your kids and what questions they've asked you. And it's okay. You're learning. And that's what you guys are doing. You embrace an open mindset and learn. Um, you'll be so much more prepared for the transaction you're in. And you'll be so much better prepared for the next transaction that you're going to do. I saw so. Sorry, I saw on Facebook yesterday um, a friend post that her son asked, are there going to be siblings at Costco? And she was like, <laughs> um. Did that have the conversation? Huh? What? Like, I don't. What? Are there going to be siblings? Siblings. Yeah. It turns out he wanted to know if there was going to be samples. Oh, samples. <laughs> oh, samples. Isn't that a great one? Siblings. So close. Um, so starts close. with S, has the right syllables. <laughs> um, just kind of missed. Jay, so, did you have a second question? I did. Yeah. Give it. Give it. <laughs> Give it. Bring it. I have heard mm. that dangerous. certain people in the industry would say things like, oh, just check all I don't know on the Form 17. Uh. Yeah, that's a great question. And I can tell you what, when I see that, None of my sellers do that, first of all, because I will send it right back to them. Yep. <laughs> but if I see that, I naturally tell the buyer, like, hey, we want to do our own investigation at this point. Yeah. Because they're not being truthful. Because they have to know some of the answers. And, and it's not, it's not how you fill it out that's going to end up mattering it's what the truth is if they get sued yeah because there's certain things like when you're reading through the form 17 you can tell that they just checked it without yeah. even reading. oh my, my, my that fast check oh, yeah, yeah my, my favorite is that there's one that says is there water potable water to the property and they check i don't know yeah, and, like, and sometimes what? that is a vocabulary. <laughs> I find that I, that's one of the vocabulary lessons that I have to give most of my sellers. Of <laughs> That means that there is is drinkable water. Like, you don't have to boil it before drinking it, things it like that. Doesn't mean there's pot in the water? <laughs> Potable water? In this water? state? Who knows? <laughs> but no, it, it, it I get asked that question a lot by sellers. And, and this is one that they're like, hey, Darcy, this might be a stupid question. But I don't understand what that word means. That's okay. Good. We can answer that because we want the That's what that answer to is. be correct. Yeah, it's legalese. So ask, that ask whole, your questions. Ask, ask, ask. Yeah, that whole form mm -hmm. is like one big vocabulary lesson. Mm -hmm. It is. Uh, but it's a great question, Jay. So my radar goes up. My little red flags go up in the event I see don't know down the line. Mm -hmm. And we're going to investigate that much further. To the point where, like, lifting up carpets that have that are on, Whoa. Um, not like the whole carpet, no, but like, like area rugs, like area rugs. Yeah, yeah. If if I want to see what the condition of that floor is, I'm going to move it and check out what the condition of the floor is. Good point. Because it's a 
buyer beware state, yep. we need to do our due diligence. If you don't disclose things, how else are we going to get the information? Yeah. Got to move some of that staging furniture. Got to pull up the sleeves. It's been done. I've been get in many a crawl it. spaces and attics. Whoa, nice. Shh. Oh, okay. Don't tell anybody, you guys. <laughs> no, but you Not learn a lot. I mean, internet. we don't just go. <laughs> no, we don't just go into like randomly go into them. We get permission first. And everything. Oh, well, that's good. But but sometimes, you know, we need to check things out because there's not enough time to do full inspections, and right. and we want to make sure that the buyer knows what they're getting into. So we take a little adventure through the house. Awesome. Okay. We got to put a pin in it because yes, we're it. we're an hour deep already. Uh, but if you're like, hey, I'm a first time home buyer who only has five percent down right. and what I want is in the like, give us your example. Let us know. Let us know in the comments and we will add that to our list of of um, example people. Yeah. And if you wanted to join us and actually have a conversation and go through kind of how we would advise you and help you. I mean, it, it's some free advice. That. If nothing else, we could take your situation and help other people kind of break it down and understand it and know that once the intention is set, that the plan comes together. Yeah. It's so powerful. So it really is. Um, super excited. I, I'm, I'm looking at our list right now. Um, relocation in or out of the uh, out of the area. This is a big one. Um, buy and rent your departing residence. Yeah, so that's a big one. That's a huge one. And there's some hacks around that and one And some too, house so. hacking going on. So um, Airbnbs. Multi-generational housing. So much multi-generational. Yeah. Who wants to live with mom and dad? Yeah, not me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but some people do. Some people do. Um, there, but, there's a, a thing right now called intentional communities, too. There's, yes. there's Oh, that's getting very big. That's getting big. Uh, so, so we'll go through each week, each month. <laughs> we'll pick a we'll pick a person. We'll, we'll pick a consumer person. profile out there, a person, and we'll dive into it. So okay. next month, everybody, we're going to come at you with the move up buyer, the dilemma. The dilemma that I think so many people are out there and one of the main causes of the stagnation in this real estate market right now is people have locked down in their house because they don't think they can make the jump to the next place. Yeah. So um, we'll be talking about that in depth. So please, in the next few weeks, if you guys have any questions, we'll put some more teasers out there on socials, Instagram, Facebook. Like, share, comment, please. Um, we will be answering any and all questions that hit the hit the comment page. Uh, we want to help you guys understand the real estate world is not a big hairy monster. It's really a cute, cuddly puppy dog. So um, I like the imagery. Yeah, that's great. That's adorable. So, well, anyway. I'm Darcy Hardy with the Hardy Group at EXP Realty. Keith Pitch with the Pitch Mortgage Team at Loan Depot. And we will catch you all next month. Thanks for tuning in.